welcome back have you ever trained a deep learning model only to realize that adding more layers made it even worse it sounds weird right so like buying a better phone but uh, but it's run let's see slowly so well today we are talking about the the genius trick called resnet residual network and trust me this ideal is like a super ball for a neural network and i'm trying i will try to make it very simple for you i will start with introduction why why resnet is was introduced and what is the core idea behind it and what is the script connection what is the residual uh, block in the in the resnet and what about the, if the if the input dimension input and output dimensions are different how to sum up all of this using the skip connection this is what we will see in the in this in this uh, lesson so a quick question what do you think happen when we add more layers to the network so uh, l l let's see theoretical if i add many layers i will get let's see more uh, <coughs> more uh, powerful let's see a uh, uh, accurate system right but this is wrong so what the the, the research is recognize that let me just do this one so uh, the resnet is a stand for residual network and it was introduced in 2015 and the resnet is just only of the old version i will see and because there are many versions of the resnet uh, resnet uh, 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 networks and the difference is only the number of layers for instance here we have 18 layers and you can see an, another network with uh, 50 layers uh, 100 and etc so why the reason why resnet was introduced so as I, I mentioned in the beginning deep network deep if, if you add many layers to the network it's not necessary that the, the system will uh, perform perfectly or let's say uh, give you a good result so why is that because this after after a certain depth of uh, layers more layers had the performance due to the vanishing gradient and what is the vanishing gradient so if you see this diagram here so assume this is our input or let's say one of the convolution network so i have my input and it will try to go through one by one this for instance convolution layers or and the batch uh, batch normalization and the uh, real or maxing max polling layers now after calculating the output here so we will try now to calculate let's see back propagate and updating the weights right and with uh, after with updating the weights some weights will some gradients will close to zero so because i have seen the the let me just see here tanage let me just see the derivative of this let me just see that like this so as you can see this is the the tanage and this is the derivative here and that's why we have somehow the during the back propagation we will see uh, values close to uh, zero and if we have for instance this will uh, we will calculate the weight perfectly here and uh, this will be okay and this but if we when we arrive to this this uh, let's see uh, convolution neural network the weights almost uh, close to zero and in that case uh, it won't let's see work properly or updating the the the, the network so this is the idea of uh, let's see that this is the contribution that uh, ResNet solves try to solve. So the core idea is here is residual uh, network. So instead of learning the entire function, let's say for instance I have here input, right? And here's the let's say a black box of the neural networks. So I will get fx. Now I will try to add the input to the output here. And for this I will try to enforce the the network to learn only the 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 let's see the difference the residual between the input between the output and the input and the output and let me i just uh, add a, a short example here imagine that you have x for instance this is input x uh, input is 10 and our value is is uh, 11, 11 now in the res in the resnet the convolution neural network will see h of x minus x it will be uh, 1 for instance 
11 minus uh, minus uh, 10 it's it be, it be will it will it will be one so what we will learn i mean what we will force the uh, the network to learn only this difference not the the 11 so this you can see if uh, h of x it is equal f of x plus x and it will be for instance this term here will be 1 plus 10 it will it will be 11 so what we have learned here what we try to enforce the 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 network to learn only the difference and you can see here this is the difference and someone I will ask where is the the h of x and this is what we will try what we are trying to to let's see to find so this is for enforcing the 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 network to give you the residual and if you didn't have let's see uh, if we are not using the skip connection a skip connection it means adding the input let's see this one here adding the input this is the input adding the input to the output this is called a skip connection and the skip connection is called also a uh, residual uh, uh, enforce the, the network to to learn only the residual the difference between input and output and as you can see here, if we have no escape connection the confliers will try to find let's see to learn how to find the exact uh, number output so here's the uh, input 10 and it will try to find 11 right and here we have in the resonant we have only to, to learn the difference we need only the one so imagine how many calculation this will uh, reduce so imagine that you have uh, let's see images and you need to find the difference between the 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 input image and the output image right let's say constructing image i don't know but uh, if you see i need this input and this output you will have many calculations if you see only i need just only this uh, difference try to focus on this difference you will eliminate many many uh, iterations so as you can see for instance this is a snapshot code of the of the resnet i will we will see it in the next let's see uh, uh, video how to implement from scratch and i will try to make it really really easy for you to follow and i will make it uh, intuitive so as you can see here for instance i have the first convolution then the second one i will this is the output it will be uh, as an input to this to uh, batch normalization and the output will be input uh, to the relu and the will be input to the conf2 and we will see uh, uh, batch normalization 2 and then we will add the identity or let's see adding x input x and input it could be uh, any any input for instance uh, uh, this input it's uh, let's see a result of a previous layers it's not needed let's see to be uh, as an image or this is a, and here's the uh, we are we will adding the the relu and this is for instance one one block and here we can see the the residual block so here's the input the as i said the input is not needed to be uh, 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 an image this as we have seen here for instance output output it's input to batch normalization right but it was output of this uh, of this neural network so assume this this is input it's uh, any output of the let's see previous layers and each neural each block in the neural net uh, in the resnet it has several uh, it has two two convolution and two batch normalization and uh, two uh, relus and you can see here this is batch norm relu conf i mean uh, sorry conf batch relu conf batch and after adding the x i mean the input we will add uh, now uh, relu and we have the output and this output will be constant as an input to the the next layers so how do we calculate the the back propagation in, in, in network in the resnet so as you can as you maybe you know if we have this network here like right to calculate the back propagation you need to go through if you'd like to have the 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 
gradients to update the gradients in this layer let's say and for this you have to go from sequentially from the output till the end of this one here and as i said this might uh, uh, causing the grid uh, vanishing gradient is a vanishing gradient so the gradient will be close to zero and in this one here we will try to of course to calculate the this this path follow this path so you can see for instance let me i'm just i'm quite sure i'm not sure if i can do it but let's see for instance this is the output i will try to calculate if I would like to calculate the weight uh, in this, I would like to calculate the, the weights, or let's see, updating the weights in this layer here. So what I will flow, there's two paths indeed. So this one here, okay, I, let's just keep it like this. This is one, one path, right? And the second path is from here and goes to directly to the, to the, to the input. To the the specific layer so this will be in indeed in this case this clear here so this is our output right and if i see i would like to calculate the gradient uh, the the gradient i will see lows uh, with respect to x and then i will uh, calculate the lo uh, f loss with respect to fx then fx with respect to x then plus uh, x so as you can see here let me just if you see assume this is our output and in here let's see assume fx it's just a simple uh, linear regression uh, uh, equation so you can see x multi time uh, x times uh, wheat plus uh, bias then we have the input here plus x so this this term here is of f of x now if we try to uh, take the derivative of this equation it will try to uh, see here weight plus one right so and you can see here even if the w let's see this weight is close to zero we still have one so that's that is the the the, the meaning of uh, uh, let's see the the skip connection the, the the advantage so you see here this is we have the direct directly x i mean we have the the x the, uh, uh, calculating the loss i mean uh, derivative with respect to x we have a direct directly one it's it's always one the derivative of skip connection is one and even if this one this term here close to zero we still have one here so this is the direct path lets you go through the skip connection keeps the gradient alive so this is the, the big advantage of the of the skip connection and let's see uh, one one uh, let's see uh, uh, a good point here so we can we have seen this input and this is the calculating the output with the in the network and we have adding the residual uh, uh, the skip connection and add it to the output but what about the dimension of these uh, of the input and the output so in the we have two cases indeed the first one the first case if we have the the shape of the input is equal to the shape of the output in this case we have no issue we can we can add it uh, without any problems so now if we have a different dimensions if you have a different dimensions for instance the input uh, is, has a different dimension from the output so we have we can't uh, sum up this uh, adding uh, let's see from the summation so we have to find the way how to do it so the, the let's see one way is to adding the batting add batting to the input and this week we can uh, finally uh, can uh, sum up all of these uh, output and the input and but is, uh, adding batting it's it's cost a lot so what we have to do is let's see just uh, this for example if i have the tensor one is uh, 50 by 50 by 32 and the output filter the output tensor is 50 by 50 by uh, 64 so i have added here one because i have only one uh, let's see one one tensor here so if we try to add this two sensors to tensors it will give us error of course 
because the, the dimension is different. So the one solution we can use is using the one convolutional, uh, uh, one, one, one times one convolution. I have also uh, uploaded a video on this, so please have a, have a look. So what is the, the advantage of this? It's trying to make the input, let's see, it's reducing the dimensionality, reducing the dimensionality and try to make, and in this, in this example, let's try to make the input is exactly the same uh, uh, size of the output. So if we have this 50 times 50 times 32 and the output is this one here, what we need is we need a one, one times one uh, convolution and this is only one filter here so because we have one times one times 32 because we have 32 here i have added one one by one for each channel and because we have the dimension in in this one in the output is 64 i have to add 64 times 64 one of these so that's why i just have no no space i just have one times one times uh, one times one times thirty two and times sixty four. It means I have sixty four blocks of this to ensure that the input would be uh, exactly as uh, the, the the output. I have this video here. I have to did this in Python. So just to show you the how the one convolutional. Uh, uh, one times one conclusion is working. So imagine I have three channels. So, and how many channels do I have here? I have 32 channels, 32. And here I have uh, only three channels. So now for each, oops, for each, uh, is there any loop? Let me just stop this. Uh, here. If there is, uh, for instance, I have three channels here, and for each channel, I will have one filter, one by one filter. That's why I have only one value here. And in here, I have one value, but 30, uh, 32 values. So I will try to multiply the first uh, channel with this filter, and the, the second uh, channel with the second filter, and the third channel with the third filter and so on and add all of these up for instance you will have six times one plus zero times one plus five times minus two so we'll have here minus uh, minus two and it says that this is only the the concept of uh, to showing the the principle of uh, one one times one convolution Okay, that's it for today. And please, if you have, uh, if you like this video, please subscribe into my channel, like the video, and if you have any question, please drop it down in the comment below. I will answer it. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.